Right, well, Free Market Foundation Executive Director Leon Lowe joining us now for some reaction to all of this. Uh, Leon, good evening, and thank you so much for your time. Firstly, I'd like to know what you think of what government has to say about the situation and what, what they think needs to be done. Well, this is actually very strange behavior under business rescue because the government itself, these are their business rescuers, and if they have uh, anything to say, they have all the uh, opportunity under company law to make whatever representations they wish to the business rescuer and for this spat to arise in public is actually somewhat strange and verges on the edge of irregularity because uh, the business rescuer is autonomous and the shareholder may not interfere. I'm not saying this is, is interference but it certainly uh, is sailing close to the wind. And uh, the, the, for, the business, for the Department of uh, Public Enterprises to think they know better than a business rescuer how to rescue SAA, given their track record, they should bow their heads in shame and apologize and hide under a bush somewhere. For them to even have an opinion is somewhat peculiar. And then just what they could realistically ask the business rescuer to do is to rescue what can be rescued as much as possible. Yeah. And that is routes, that is landing slots, that is what few planes SAA still own nine and, and uh, the lease agreements and and jobs yeah. uh, we have some very fine employees very dedicated loyal people especially in the pilots association and the way to rescue it is to invite viable airlines in the world not to try and keep it going as a state-owned enterprise that's actually silly we've been saying for five years it can't be done stop being silly. Get on with bringing in, rescuing as much as you can, bringing in viable international airlines, Ethiopian or United or British or somebody, and let them bid for what is of value, yes. including you negotiate keeping existing jobs and getting voluntary severance for people who would prefer to leave. Can I ask what your thoughts were on the uh, business rescue practitioners plan? I mean, we were looking at just cancelling those routes. There may have been some job cuts as well. So, you know, what what would be the problem with that well, my short view, term? My view is the business rescuer is trying to rescue, and that obviously are the two business rescuers' responsibility. That's what they're there yes, to do. Yes. Uh, but they can rescue the company or they can rescue the jobs and the national brand, which many of us like me in South Africa feel emotional mm -hmm. about and attached to. You can rescue the brand so that commuters won't even know there's a difference. It'll be like, for example, now you fly British Airways and it says British Airways operated by Comair. You could have South African Airways operated by Ethiopian or whatever it might be, or Emirates. Yeah. Uh, so the business rescuer unfortunately has the wrong mandate which we should be trying to rescue what can be rescued as much as possible. Jobs, brand, routes, landing slots, equipment. That, and unfortunately, that's not what is proposed. What, did it, what do you feel government actually wanted to happen here? Because you, like, like you said, if you had a plan, if you had the ideas, and there were some things you didn't want to happen, why didn't you go ahead and try and fix it yourself? But you brought in the business rescue practitioners. Do you suspect, do you think that they were trying to steer this in a certain direction? I think it's very peculiar. It is very peculiar to having failed, which you admit to when you bring in a business rescue, you apply for voluntary business rescue. That is your way of saying we failed. Having failed, you, and you put a business rescue in, you then say the business rescue should do it your way. Mm. Uh, so it is actually very peculiar indeed and then to do it in public is peculiar for the government uh, even at the level of the president to attack their own business rescuers in public is, is actually very uh, let's say um, dif difficult to understand. Yeah, and you have to ask why. I mean, surely, I mean, these decisions were made over the past few days, and, and I, I, would, I can't imagine that they had enough time to go to these business rescue practitioners personally and say, listen, we don't actually, this is not what we wanted, but the first time for them to hear would, would be through the, through the media. Or, or in that public. is right. It's and they, should, they have access. They should go to the business rescuers, sit down and talk, present their alternate proposals, and understand that it is now in the hand of their choice mm. of the business rescuers. How do you see this panning out now? Obviously, we have a bit of, we have a, a major clash, we have a major issue. How do you see the uh, business rescue practitioners possibly responding to this? What would be the middle ground? I'm, I don't 
think the business rescuers have a middle ground. Business rescuers are obligated they under they, they law. They what they must do, they job, must yes. operate autonomously and independently, may not be manipulated or influenced by any stakeholder whatsoever, including the shareholder, but they must look at all the proposals made. So, in other words, the right thing for anyone to do, uh, the Pilots Association or Solidarity or anybody, uh, the, the department as well, the government, is to now go to the business rescuer, study what has been proposed and make alternative proposals. That is the right thing to do and that is what is required by company law. The business rescuer should say, sorry, this is illegitimate. We will take proposed recommendations. The business rescuers are in charge and everyone needs to understand that. This is now handed over to them and the DE, the, the government of public enterprise, DPE, has admitted that it's failed. So it should really, as I say, bow its head in shame and hide somewhere under a bush, not stand up stridently and criticize the business rescuers they themselves appointed. So in, in, in your mind, this is definitely interference by government, by the No, 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 it's not interference. The government, everyone, you and I and the government and the president are all free to express opinions. Mm. Uh, it wouldn't be interference, it would just say be, let's call it odd or strange or, or difficult to explain or it may be some sort of political posturing which I don't understand. But I'd be very interested to see how the business rescue practitioners actually respond to this. <laughs> Thanks very much for that, Leon Lowe. And uh, let's see, I suppose it's a wait and see situation. What else will come out of the magic hat? I don't yes, know. it is. And hopefully the business rescuers will do their job properly according to law and not be you know, unduly influenced by mm. government or anyone else. Okay.